ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to me? I got ADHD. It's about anything. It's about everything. It's ADHD. Welcome back to the third episode of ADHD. It's a great day because I have my girlfriend, Madeline Petch, on the show. I'm here. We're podheads today. You're a podhead. Podhead, okay. Podhead, you know? This Pod. is your first This is your first podcast. It is. It's Probably day. first and only. You think so? I don't know. I'm not like, you know, I'm not much of a podcast listener. No shade, no tea, but just not like my vibe. <laughs> <laughs> the only podcast I think I've heard you listen, well, you listen to uh, Armchair Expert with me. Oh, I do love Dax Shepard's podcast. Yeah. Right. And the That's episode great. with him and, and Kristen Bell was hilarious. Hilarious. And we were like, we should do that. Oh one my day. goodness. I love that. And now we're here, kind of right, doing, doing it. Kind of doing and it. And we're kind of armchair in an armchair. I don't know if I call myself an expert, yeah, but you know. Yeah. And today I got my sign. So looking behind, we find, you know what? This just officiates the podcast because you, are you even a real podcast if you don't have a sign? I think so. Oh. oh. I'm, Sorry. You're I mean, discrediting like, But like the podcast work. is more about listening than watching, right? So like, how do they know if you have a sign? I mean, there's there's cameras here and stuff. Right. Yeah. True. Damn, you're hating on my neon sign. Not at all. I was so excited really to bring excited. it home. Look, it's very cute. I like it. It I is, to, right? I, I was sitting there when you designed it. I hey, like, right drop a like, uh, you know, if you're watching this and you can see the sign and you like it, let us let, <laughs> let, let <laughs> If you can see the sign and you're watching it, drop a you like. Also, you also listen to some murder mystery podcasts. Mm, serial. And, serial. Just the one season though. And that goes into your whole like, uh, you like the those, Don't do those this shows. Tonight. No, you like like the, the the Snapped and all those crime. First of all, I've never watched Snapped. I don't know where you pulled that one Whatever out of your Whatever it is. A crime mystery. I like watching YouTube. There's this YouTube, there's a YouTuber. I don't even know her name. Yeah, I don't but know. I, but I, in, in her voice drives you insane. And that's so funny because whenever I listen to you, you're like, can you turn that down? <laughs> but she's just so like, she's got all the facts. Like she always tells me about all these me. Like she's talking like to she's me. Like she's texting you. I'm like that person. <laughs> um, she always talks about these like crazy murder mysteries. And I watch them when I'm at home in Vancouver and then I can't sleep. And then I'm calling Travis like, oh my God, did you know this person was murdered in this way? And oh my God, I think it might happen to me tomorrow. <laughs> like, well then, and then when you come home to LA, I get woken up at like eight or nine in the morning with like, he decapitated her head in the shower and put it in a freezer <laughs> for three weeks. Police were not able to identify the woman's head because it was so badly muted. And I wake up like, what the fuck are you listening to? <laughs> Um, I, a, oh, that's good, that's good. I just did a, a interview recently and, and one of the questions for me was, uh, what does your morning routine look like? We should do a parody video of that because it's actually quite funny. What's your, uh, hey, what does your morning routine look like? Mine? Let's yeah. talk about this morning because this morning was a particularly cute morning. This morning, my boyfriend doesn't usually make me coffee anymore. Like he's kind of- What got, do you mean anymore? In the beginning when you were still wooing, coffee was made I'm every always morning. wooing. Mm. Okay, but this morning I was coming on this podcast. You're coming off real discontent right now. No, 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 no. No, it's like, you know when you've been in a two-year relationship? Ah. Ah. Um, whatever. It's like uh, this morning I was coming on this podcast, very excited. And like he woke up like 10 minutes before the alarm and was like, oh, I love you, baby. You're my heart. You know, very cute, like very excited. And then like went downstairs, made his own coffee. Then came back up, saw that I was awake and was like, do you want a coffee? And I was like, yeah, I, was like, I told him how to make it. And he's like, I know. What do you think I am? At like 8 a.m. He's like, what do you think I am? Don't play me out. No one's here. No one's like, I'm asleep still. So he brings up the coffee and then I take a sip. He's like, how is it? Did I do it well? Is it okay? That's like, okay, but look, when we go to shoot one of your YouTube videos and like you plan out like a whole day, yeah. right? We're like, you're like, hey, baby, you do the same thing. You yeah. wake me up and it's like, hey, baby, do you need any coffee? I got you coffee, <laughs> baby. Hey, what do you want for breakfast, baby? <laughs> hey, do you want to buy Disney ears, baby? <laughs> do you want to wear these for a YouTube video? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then I lay in bed for like 30 minutes and I usually do my makeup in bed. Uh, yeah, while watching the murder while mysteries. While watching murder mysteries. Well, you watch, you have an eclectic uh Let's not talk about my YouTube, YouTube taste. I'd rather taste. just leave that. I think, I just, you know it's what very I do like? all over the place. Thank you. You know what I do like though, is that no one knows what I watch on YouTube. And I like that. Yeah, just I think that's wait. like the one safe thing for me. Like, you know, I can keep that close to home. So that's one thing that's off the top. You that's cannot what, talk about this talk on about the podcast. Yeah, that's the one Your off YouTube the topic. viewing history. That's exactly right. That's it. Well, what draws you into like the murder, the murder mysteries though? You know. Because look, I'll tell everyone here, like, you are kind of like you're innocent in the sense of like you just think the world and I love this about you you think the world is like a beautiful place and you think like bad things like don't necessarily happen okay that's not necessarily true like I know bad things happen I just see the good in every like every situation every person yeah, for the most part yeah 
And that's nice about you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, <laughs> You're the I'm not complete so, opposite. Yeah. I'm like very so that's distrusting why we work at well first. together, I feel like though. <laughs> because like we, I don't know. We like, do we gel? Because like I see the good in everything. And then you're like, no, do you not see that? He just did that. And then this person did that. And then this. And I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even notice. And I'm like sitting right in front of it. You know? I guess. Yeah. Now I just feel super negative. I'm not that negative. No, no, positive. you're not negative at all. You're incredibly positive. You just, um, you just are more street smart than I am. Why did you start your YouTube? Because like, were you, were you this big of a fan of watching videos? Because in the beginning of our relationship, you didn't really do that. No. Nah, so, you know, season one of Riverdale was an incredibly strange. By the way, I feel like I should start doing this on the podcast. I'm really bad at this. I just start talking. Oh, and you're like, who, no and, one knows and who this yeah, person so is. So for everyone listening, um, my girlfriend, Madeline Petch, uh, you're on, you're on like this little show. It's like, what is it called? Um, Rivendale. Oh, 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 Riverside? River, Riverdale. Oh, Riverdale. Riverdale. Okay, I've heard of that show. You know what's funny? Rivendale is actually a place in Lord of the Rings, right? Gryffindale. Gryffindor. Gryffindale. Gryffindale. What are you, what are, what are no, you talking about? No, Gryffindale. You're thinking of Gryffindale. I'm thinking of Rivendale. No, Riverdale is a show you're on. Now you're just Riven, confused. Riven, Look, guys, Riven. this is oh my what God, happens no, do when not you say Gryffindale. to No! Oh. Gryffindor is Harry Potter. Duh, I'm a pothead. I know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh my gosh. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. So anyways, you're on a show called Riverdale. Mm -hmm. You have your own sunglass line. I do. You have a popping YouTube channel. Mm, yeah, it's Yeah, okay. you have a pretty cool Twitter. Your Instagram's cute because I'm on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cocky? Okay. No, I'm just kidding. You post really cute photos. Thank you. And it just gives me a platform to hit on you. Yeah, yeah. and just another the one. Comments. Through yeah, the just, comments. Yeah, just slide into the one. comments. Just slide it in. Yeah. That sounded bad. Yeah, let's rewind the pot. No, you can't do that. It's a lot. Hey, you can't do that. Okay. Um, anyways, okay. So I forgot what I was going to ask you before I set this Something up. Something about Riverdale. Uh, why'd you start? Oh yeah, why'd you start your YouTube channel? I know you've talked about this a lot. Yeah, a lot. Um, so season one of Riverdale. I lived in Vancouver. Obviously, we still do. It was a seven month shoot versus a ten month shoot. I was living with Lily at the time, and on like weekends hey. off, I wouldn't usually like roommates. I wouldn't usually fly. Oh, hello. I wouldn't usually fly back to LA. I was like very much, I had this idea that if I was on the show, I had to be there 24 seven, even if I wasn't Why? shooting it. Just cause I was like, I really wanted to kill it. No, I just really wanted to kill it. Like you I was like- hella maple syrup? Okay, like, no, <laughs> I'm being serious. <laughs> ah! You wanted, to, you wanted to stay focused. I wanted to just like really put my, all of my energy into this thing. And I did. And so I ended up kind of, I had watched everything on Netflix at like a certain point And I was like, I didn't have a, t like we had no cable at the place that we were living. It was very much just, you know, the two of us in a place and we'd hang out and we'd watch movies or whatever. But then when I would go into my cave is what she would call it. And I, I that's when I discovered YouTube. I never was a huge YouTube fan before that. And then I was going to explore page and click on random videos. And it kind of got me through like the rain. It's very rainy in Vancouver. Yeah, and I can attest to that. Yeah, it's, um, and I grew up Gloomy. in Washington state. So like you, I should in theory be used to that, but I've totally gotten used to LA sunshine, Beautiful. as you can see. Even like in the middle well, of your December. your hair looks better when the sun is radiating down That's upon exactly it. You know, why like, you I got used to it. You have a glow right now, like an essence. Thank you. I don't know if it's like the headphone shadow, mm -hmm. but it looks like a halo. I think it's probably the headphone okay. shadow. Um, anyways, whatever. I really got into YouTube during season one. It kind of got me through a lot of the rain and just kind of being in my little cave. And then we started dating. And once the show aired around when we started dating, mm -hmm. I noticed a lot of people truly thought, because Cheryl in the very first season was quite manipulative and she had this like bitchy, bitchy facade. And like everybody who hadn't yeah. met me was worried about me being this awful human being. So and scared. now Cheryl's got all of these layers and people know that she's like a much more complex human being and she's got all this character development and she's actually just a broken little girl. And mm -hmm. all of these different things kind of poured out throughout the rest of the seasons. But, but I feel like you've like, she's almost become like a hero now. Sort of, yeah. I mean, like, you look, know? what I love about her is that she can have, like, an, an episode where she's the hero, and then she can have an episode where she's coming in and being sassy. Mm -hmm. Like, she's got dimension. Well, she's been everything. She's been a victim before. You know what I she's mean? She's been the she's victim, been... the villain, the, you know, the, the hero, the, you know, everything. Yeah. And it's, that's what makes playing her so fun. But I, in the beginning, I was really afraid of fans thinking I was genuinely that person. I'm an actor, so I'm acting like that. So I started a YouTube channel to, like, show people who I really was. And then it created such a good connection with my fans and I didn't really want to stop doing it. I was only going to do a couple videos at yeah, first, you know that. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, I like Well, now this. you're like an and editing genius. <laughs> I love now editing. You like, you like literally like you do everything. It's crazy to yeah. watch. And like people, you know, I have people come up to like, yo, who shoots your girlfriend's YouTube videos? And like who edits them? I'm like, she does. Like, yeah. She does literally. And you're like showing me how to do animations and like <laughs> crazy things for your Christmas videos. Um, I love that. Have you, like, did you always want to like get into like editing and no. be more behind the scenes? No. I mean, I was a personal assistant to a photographer. So I did all of her retouching for like headshots for a long time. So for some reason it feels similar to that, but 
I'm just somebody who like, you're very similar to like, you get into a hobby and then you're obsessed with that thing yeah. for like three or four months and then you move on. I don't necessarily oh. move on though. Like I become obsessed with something like editing and then I make it my mission to be the best. Can I swear on your, are you, you can your do show? whatever the fuck to be you the, want. I've never sworn in, a, in, a, in anything before. Wow. Trigger warning. Oh my God, this is crazy guys. First time you're ever gonna hear me say the F word. But I've never, like I really put every effort to be the best fucking editor that I can be. Like yeah. that's what I'm doing now is like, I wanna be the best. But then now we were talking in the elevator. It's like, I'm so busy that I can see my editing quality going down and I can see that I should bring somebody in to help me because it's making, it's actually making my career, it's becoming detrimental. Mm. Like having to edit a video and then I feel this pressure to put a video out on Wednesday yeah. because I know my fans look forward to that and I don't want to let them down. But I'm working, I'm traveling probably four times a week and I'm trying to launch other things. I almost just gave something away, but I'm trying to launch something else. And so there's a lot of things going on in my life and I want to keep this editing because I, I love having that for the fans because it feels like another connection. Like I edit, I didn't, not only did I shoot this for you and I took my time, but I edited it for you. Like my heart, soul and everything, blood, sweat, tears, everything. Do you think that's like a control thing? Like not- Yes. One, yeah. You know I'm a control I know. Freak. And you know, Gary Vayner, I had Gary Vaynerchuk on the first episode. Mm -hmm. And one, one thing that we talked about too is like, I was like, how do you stay so consistent with all of your content? And he's like, he's like not being obsessed with perfection, being okay with, with if, if, it, if I have a hundred things that are an eight, it's bad, you know what I mean? And oh, uh, that's so hard. See, like, is. you know. And self awareness, I think it's like, like self awareness comes into the thing where like, you know how good you are, but you also know how busy you are. So, yeah, how but do like, you I don't think I should, my quality, my content should suffer in quality wise. Like, I personally, and like, guys, comment down below. Let me know what you think if you're watching this in a YouTube form. Like, let me know if you think that I should just push out content, even if the quality isn't 100%. I'm or not saying should, rush it. I'm not saying no, rush it. No, but I'm saying, like, if a video isn't ready on a Wednesday, I'm not putting it out. And mm -hmm. then I just put out a little statement on YouTube saying, like, guys, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm backed up editing. Like, I'll get it out as soon as I can. And it goes out on a Thursday or whatever. Then sometimes I'll put two videos up because I've had extra time. So I just don't know if that's what they prefer, but that's what my, like, anxiety prefers. Otherwise, if I put up a video that's not perfect, I'll be trolling the comments to see if they notice the one little thing that I oh, missed so or do, whatever okay, it is. So you read all of them. Only if I have like insecurities about the video do I read comments. Cause for the most part, like the comments I get are either incredibly supportive or incredibly mean. And I, my skin isn't as thick as I'd like it to be. So I try to avoid mean comments still. Do you feel like it's gotten thicker like through your success? Yeah, but I also feel like I've learned how to ignore like the mean comments as well. But yeah, for sure. I feel like How do you ignore thicker. the mean comments? I don't read them. But you just said- I don't read the mean ones. So okay. like I do like, have, you know how you can do like- You can like kind of like, like preface it like before a, you like- yeah, like it's like filtering it, like, your brain. Attention. You know, like I filter my brain. I'm like ADHD. What was that? I'm like ADHD. Ooh, like. <laughs> That's an inside joke, guys. We do this thing. <laughs> you do that thing. I do this thing. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I don't know why I'm I like think a it's- kitten. I honestly think drinking. it's the cutest thing ever. Nope. You guys are probably gonna think it's really gross, From but like- a saucer. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? What? What was that Ashley Simpson song? Uh, on a Monday. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, stop your, stop, 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 you're getting in my head. Uh, uh, I'm like an alley cat, drink the milk of Bella Four. That's her. There you are. I've never heard that song before. <laughs> <laughs> no, awkward, I think that was Ashley Simpson. <laughs> I think I might've said that talk to her. About, let's, talk about, uh, let's talk about Milan Fashion Week because we actually got to hang out with Ashley Simpson. I think Simpson. I sang that to her in the back of a, Limo one time. What, when we were going out to the club? Yeah, well, that wasn't a club. That was an event. Oh, it was, a, it was the, what was it, Vogue? We went to Vogue. Vogue Italia. So we went to uh, Milan Fashion Week this year. It oh was God. really fun. Thank oh. you to Prada, uh, all the beautiful people at Prada. <laughs> uh, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Because that's something I feel like we really haven't discussed, right? Like we went, people oh, saw a lot of- Oh, I did a, a video. Yeah, you did, you did yeah. a YouTube video, but I feel Check like- Check it out in the description <laughs> below, maybe. <laughs> so promo. Info card up here. Um. <laughs> I'll put it in at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it was, I was actually, we're, we're shooting Riverdale right now. Like that's the thing is, it was like the middle of September. We started in July this year. 22 episodes. 22. 22 episodes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know why the, why I made those noises. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> do you ever like kind of just space out and then you realize you were doing something? Like Anyways. Gruntled. Moving on. Um, yeah, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to go. So we got invited in August, like yep. beginning of August. I got this text from my stylist being like, Prada wants to fly you and Travis out for Milan Fashion Week. I, I, I was on set and I started crying. It was the first day shooting Riverdale again. I remember that. And I texted you, I was like, oh my God. And we FaceTimed and we were so excited. First Milan Fashion Week, Prada's been my favorite designer for a very long time. And so for them, that, that recognition and that relationship to be so strong was huge for me. And uh, we went and it was beautiful. It was three very, very short days. I wish we could have been there for two weeks, honestly. Mm -hmm. The fans, I, the love and affection 
like in the, like, like it was just, they're beautiful it's different, people. Right? It's, it's different. different. And you know, I never, there's are people I maybe would never have met in a different circumstance. Like that was why, excuse me. I loved it so much. What? I'm drinking. No, I like it. What? It's cute. I had like a little hiccup. Yeah, d- I like Don't it. Don't laugh at, do I see what I deal with? Any hoosers. Um, it's just, it was really lovely. They were really wonderful people. Um, and they had a lot of really great things to well, say. Well, let's talk about, okay, this is something. Sorry, we, what were we talking about? Italy, but let's right. talk about the thousands of mosquito bites. So I just want to let everyone no, know, listen, we get to this. the hotel. Okay. okay. And this is Madeline like, this, this, opens this, the window. Hold on, hold on. This podcast is going to end up being Travis throwing Madeline under the bus no. 53 minutes straight, <laughs> by the way. No, I just want, I just, we're talking about things from an angle that nobody else has really gotten to experience. So I want to, I want them to know we got literally thousands. I'm okay. I'm not exaggerating now. Not thousands. Okay. Hundreds. Uh, between you and I, a hundred, a hundred mosquito bites. I've never been in more pain and uncomfortable. Oh my, oh my God. I'm thinking about when that, that's oh. what I mean. Anytime Ooh. I get an itch, I think I have like itches, like over, like scars. No, do you remember when we would sleep with so much clothes on and then we would wake up and there'd be one on our body and <laughs> you and there'd be blood on you. Um, and I'm like against killing things, but wow, this is like so. Well, we and, and here's here's the gene, but like we get to the hotel room, we open up the window, we go to bed, we like go out, right? The window's open, mm-hmm. we go and do our things, we go have dinner. Because I'm thinking, stuff. like, wow, Milan's so beautiful. Let's, Let's smell look out it. The Let's window. look out. Oh, there's a bridge. Oh, and it's and, so oh, oh, Italian. Oh, yeah. Ah. You know, like all of that yeah. stuff. And, and then we, we had a beautiful night. We yeah. left the window. You're like, oh, and I, I said this before bed. I said this because I looked at it as like, Where's baby, I was like, baby, do you want to close the window? You're like, baby, it's Italy. Let's leave it open it's and beautiful. feel the breeze. It's beautiful. We wake up just wrecked, right? And uncertain. Like at a point we were like, do we have bed we're, bugs? Yeah, we thought it was bed bugs. Because we and, didn't, I never saw a mosquito the first night. No. And, and they're very stealth. Yo, Italian mosquitoes, they're stealthy. But they're huge. They're, like, they're huge, big motherfuckers. But, they're like this big. <laughs> but they come in, they bite you and they leave. No, nah, but then remember that the third night we finally realized it was mosquitoos. And well, hold he, on, let's backtrack. We, we, we're telling we every night it, story. We okay. thought it was bed bugs. Yeah. So we literally are crazy people. And we're taking photos of the mattresses. And sending it to like my, everybody send, on my team. We're sending like, it to like my mom. My we're manager. Sending her manager. We're sending it to like, uh, like, like our fashion people. Yeah. And like our stuff. We're like, yo, are these bed bugs? And our driver, we, were, we asked her. She was like, that's not a bed bug. But we we're like, are you sure? And she's like from Italy. Yeah. She's like, those are mosquitoes. And we're like. We're like, mm, uncertain. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know why we waited till our last night to get mosquito repellent. Well, and where were we? We were so busy. We, I did not imagine that the hotel would have it. And then when you called down and they had all this mosquito stuff, I was like, okay, obviously it's mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. But like, why did nobody warn us when we checked in? If, there, if it's that big of a problem that they have mosquito repellent, insect bite, like what is it? After bite is what they call yeah. it. You know what I mean? They have all this stuff. Why didn't they warn us? Like, don't sleep with the windows open. <laughs> September is a really big time Really for big time for mosquitoes. But I just think it's funny that like we're flown out here, right? And I'm sure like people think like, oh, fashion week. It's like so this, glamorous. It's this glamorous, prestigious thing. I was an little bitch. Literally we're walking like a carpet with like, the hundreds of bites and on I had us. so many I had so much makeup all over my body because I had like I, I remember the welts oh my god the welts well well my hands were covered in bites it, that was the worst part because I'd sleep in a robe at the end of the night and I'd just be like this and then they could only get my hands so it'd be hand remember the face one you got I got bitten probably seven times on my face. Yeah. Like around my face. But that one, the really bad one looked like a like a terrible cystic pimple. Yeah. It like another like nose face. was growing out. I had like face. a mosquito growing out of my out of my like temple. Correct. And then the crazy thing is my tattoos is I couldn't see them but all. You could feel but them. I could feel them. So when you would run up his arm, it'd be like bop, 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 bop. And uh yeah, that was probably the highlight of my trip. Uh besides we ate uh we ate the same meal every the same day. Meal, every single day. Every single meal. Yeah, and that, I ate more pasta. I wait, I ate my weight in pasta. I think. I think I might have gained like eight pounds. I don't. You know what's funny is I think I like I genuinely think I lost weight. It was just so. It's just so good. And we we got to eat next to Spike Lee, and he 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 admired the drip. He was like, "I like your style." Remember? And I was I was geeked out. Yeah, I was like, "Wow." Spike Lee's dope. Spike Lee is super dope. Well, then we got to like listen to that whole. We we were really lucky to be able to stay there that last day because we were like maybe not going to be able to. Yeah, and we got to go to that. That it wasn't conference. a fashion show. It was like, it was, it was, you know well, what it was like? It was almost like a live podcast, right? Kind of, but there was like, it, they opened it up for Q and A and like, there was a lot of, I think, I think it was just really interesting to hear Spike's perspective on the industry. And like, it was, he spoke a lot about saving money and how, and how to invest properly. Reinvesting in, like, in yourself. In yourself and also reinvesting in your community. Because mm-hmm. like he was saying, I don't remember where he grew up. 
but he was saying Chicago. He, he grew up in Chicago. Well, no, and, they were talking about that uh, the museum that his friend had opened, right? Uh, and, and how he, he reinvested into yeah, that, yeah, yeah, to help kind of build back where he grew up. It was really interesting. I just think it's so cool to see like what he's done, you know, for film and not only that, but like designing his own shoe, right? With Jordan, like having he's one insane. of the craziest Jordans. And, and then like- also the most humble human being ever. Oh, incredible. So humble. Yeah. And they were there talking about Black Klansman, the yep. movie that he was doing. Yep. Um, and yeah, we literally, we, su- we sat next to Miss Prada. Oh my goodness. Right? It was- I was shaking. Yeah. <laughs> literally shook. Like actually shook. And we just got to like listen to greatness for like an hour and a half. While it itching. Than that. While itching and also- you weren't like supposed to get up and pee. And I remember towards both? the last 30 minutes of it, I thought I was going to die. I was like, okay, great. I'm going to die. Yeah. But I'd rather die here watching this than like, <laughs> you know, pee right now. So what's you it were, like being on a 14 hour flight with me? Oh, let's talk about our travel back home because we had like a 24, what was it, a 24 hour travel day? What? Yeah. 14 hour travel day. No, 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 no. We, we had, had a, a nine hour flight. We had a layover. Remember that layover though? All right. Where we got screwed? Yeah. No one cares. No, let's it's talk about something more interesting, honestly. Yeah. Like, why don't we need to talk about the flight? I don't know. We don't need to talk about that. Let's talk about this. Is your hair real? Yes, my hair is real. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ugh, we don't need to talk about it's not, I, I wanted to bring that thing up from last night, but it's like- You want to? No, let's do it. No, let's no, no. Do I don't want to. No, 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 no I, seriously, I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to talk about it, and it's fine. But I'm just like, I have to just say, like, I am so beyond tired of people- Oh, it makes me so mad. Like telling, like when I do an interview, like not obviously with my boyfriend, but when I leave an interview, someone's like, okay, seriously, where'd you get your lips done? And it's like, I just told you they're real. Like how disrespectful. I get really fired up about this. You do lip pushups. You're like, I'm like, I work so hard to have (laughs) these. No, but it's like, I, if you look at my fucking baby photos, I look exactly the goddamn same. And it makes me so angry when people just make assumptions like that. If I'm looking into your eyes and I'm saying, I've never had any work done. Take that at face value. Literally face Face value. value. Come on. Jinx. Also, it's just rude. Like, it's rude. Hey, I'll go to war for you. I know you. <laughs> I'll go to war I wish for I could you. tell you about this, but I don't want to bring any, like, any any more, inf- like, attention to it than he this person deserves. Like, he doesn't deserve the attention. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Just know that. What do you think? Um, <laughs> let's talk about our relationship because I feel like everyone wants to know these Also, questions. can I just ask you to do me one huge favor? Hmm. Can you sit forward quickly and just pull down your jacket because you're looking kind of like… Um, Stumpy? What's the uncle, Uncle Frumpy? Fez from um, Oh, I have Adam's a hunchback? Family? I have Correct. a hunchback. Yeah. Okay, I won't look. I'll look distinguished. Or you can like just take it. It's YMCA di- time. You know what that means. It's time for motherfucking ads. Ads. Is, ads. It, is there more than one? Ad. No, there's one. Ad. And, and you know time what? This, I'm happy for this one because uh, I got it. I brought it here today so you could see because it's really cute. And I know when, when I brought it home or when I got shipped, you were like, uh, you were like, what is this? It's look? very aesthetically pleasing. It is, right? Here, I'm going to set this right here. All right. Watch this, guys. This is going to be really fun. Did you remember? Oh, okay. Let's see. No, no, no. Break uh, it up, break it's, it up. It, today's podcast is brought to you guys uh, by Care Of. They got my name on my vitamin packs. Uh, <laughs> Care Of is a monthly subscription vitamin service that delivers completely personalized vitamin and supplement packs right to your door. You know, when we first met, you would say vitamin all the I time. I still say vitamin. And it… I, I would, I would Sorry, tease did you drive you insane? Is that what you were about to say? I tease you all the time. Okay. Uh, okay. What I love about this is that I literally went online uh, and it's like they have a fun online quiz. They ask you about your diet. They ask you about your health goals, lifestyle choices. It literally takes like five minutes. But you have to be honest. You really do. No, you have to be honest. It takes five minutes to find out what vitamins and supplements you actually need. 90% of people fall short of FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin vitamin or vitamin. Or 90%. 90%. And you know what's really bad is that I buy vitamins and just forget to take them. Not only that, but you haven't, yeah. I just, I'm yeah. not going to call you out. Yeah, do your thing. <laughs> I, Keep, no, do your ad. I try, okay. No, do your ad. Why uh, am I doing this? <laughs> care of, uh, the difference is that they get delivered right to your door. They're personalized. They're easy to remember. Like literally they have my name on it and they come with like cool facts. Like, you know Cute. those popsicle read me your, sticks? Read me your fact. So today's fact is the Library of Congress is the largest library in the world with more than 164 million items. Wow. So I, I take one of these a day. And you learn. Uh, yeah, the box, uh, it comes with, let's see, there's 30, 30 packs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, they put honesty first. They provide you all the research that support each of their recommendations backed by a scientific advisory board. A portion of every sale goes toward the Good Plus Foundation, which provides expectant mothers in need with valuable prenatal vitamins. Cute, I love this. I know. And you were talking about your nails and your hair, and I told you prenatal, and I know that from hair school. Yeah, but I don't I think prenatal vitamins. 
We need to find vegan. Uh, you can track your progress with the Care of app and earn rewards when you remember to take your vitamins. Mm. Your monthly subscription box can easily be modified at any time. And for me, like I wanted, uh, I think I wanted a little bit more fish oil. So I just added like extra fish oil to mine. Can I ask you why though? Just curious. Just, just like what makes you think that fish oil is For my for skin you? and mm. for my hair and mm. for my nails and all of that, you know, just, just good. It's just good. My mom has always told me to take that. Isn't it weird how like, okay, anyways, finish your Emma's. Uh, but here, here's something for you, okay? Because there are vegan and vegetarian supplement options mm -hmm. available uh, to match your dietary needs. Uh, they offer pre and postnatal supplements with accompanying research to help mothers and babies stay their healthiest and their delicious nutrient packed. Quick stick powders can be added to your monthly delivery for an extra easy boost whenever you need it. I got some of those. They're like the, uh, you know, you just add them to your drink, fizz up, they taste really good. Like a vitamin C boost, you feel better. Um, yeah, you guys can use uh, you can use my promo code ADHD twenty five percent off your first month of personalized care of vitamins. All you got to do is visit takecareof.com and enter promo code ADHD. Wow, how was that? I would say that was pretty excellent. Round of applause. You think so? Round oh God! <laughs> Almost spilled my coffee. Uh, okay, so back to me. Uh, and okay, so and back vitamins. to me. No, you were gonna. You weren't gonna call me out during my ad, and okay, I appreciate two that. Travis and I, for I'd probably say the last year of our relationship, I've been talking about getting our vitamin levels tested. By the way, vitamin. I'd like to pause and rewind, and everybody listen to the fact that Travis said back to me and my vitamins. I've won. It rubs off. I've won. Um, <laughs> Anywho, so I recently went to the gynecologist. Ladies, take care of your hoo-ha. It's very important. Um, and I got my vitamin levels tested and I'm super excited to get my results back so I can finally take the proper vitamins that I'm supposed to be taking. Well, yeah, do that. Yeah, but like you, we've been talking about this for a well, year. Look, like, look, next time I go to my well, gynecologist, yeah, I'm going to get my vitamins to <laughs> check out. I just got to go to the gyno. That'll be fine. <laughs> no, we just got to You got any you recommendations? Need. I need, I need I a new one. I love my girl. She's really my good. My gyno just moved. She's really good. Okay. I have to say she's like top 1%. <laughs> okay. Amazing. I need it. She yeah, makes just, you feel comfortable when you're in the stirrups. Good. You know? Yeah, my the straddles, you know? The stirrups. The stirrups, I mean. Yeah. They're just, they make me feel weird. She puts little like cute socks on them for you and like makes you feel like- Really? I want boot, like, yeah, the booty socks, you know? The bootsies. Like those, like, you know, the socks that you pull up, the Bootsy socks. What do they call those? Fo footsy socks. Booty socks? Booty socks. That's the first thing you said. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? Booty, 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 rocking there. You better stop. Well, don't look me directly in live while you say that. Um, so the other night we went to the GQ Men of the Year party. Men of the Year. Men of the Year. Yeah, because I was asking the whole time, who's the man of the year? Well, I thought it was Jonah Hill. And no, and then I finally looked at the cover like an idiot. Jonah and Hill. I, no, there's, it's Men of the Year. There's Jonah like, Hill. There's 10 people or something like that. Yeah, I but Jonah Hill. <sighs> I'm just kidding. He was one of the 10 though. Um, anyways, so I want to talk about this because we found ourselves <laughs> sitting in a pretty cool, pretty eclectic group, right? Because like my friend David was there, aka Lil Dicky. Mm -hmm. The cast of Riverdale was here. <laughs> so yes. it was like you, Cami, Charles. Cole was running around somewhere. Cole is such a little socialite, yeah. He was just He's like busy. bouncing off the walls. Yeah. Uh, and then it was Ray Shremmerd and Juicy J. <laughs> Wait, Juicy J was there? Yeah. He walked through. Yo, I Slap, like- I'm on that. Like, yeah. I know who that- Don't oh. sing that song on the, your <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, see, I'm delusional. And like, I don't- Not even delusional. I'm- What would you call me? I am like- there's like, when I'm at- In your own world? Sorta, yeah. When I'm out, like, I kind of just like focus on you. you. And so like, for real though, like literally think about it. Like when you, like that, the thing, like, I can't talk about this on your podcast. Never mind. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. It's like, I feel like I forget that there's cameras on us and we're not just talking to some people. But so I walk up to you, right? And like, there's that conversation being had. And like, I don't even notice this conversation being had because I'm like, oh, like rubbing your back, like looking at my boyfriend. That's like at events. Like, I don't really pay attention to- external. <laughs> so like, I didn't know that like Ray Shrummerd was like hanging out right there. Like I was like, oh cool. Like your friends. Like I didn't even pay attention. Like, but I've met those guys before. Like I know them. Yeah. That's just who I am as a person. I like that. People walk up to me like, Hey, good to see you. And I'm like, good to see you. You know what I mean? Are you, are you good with names? I'm great with names, but connecting name to face is hard. So I can remember faces and I can remember names. Does that make sense? I can only remember faces, but one thing I've been doing the last like two months has been trying to remember names and like making up like little games to go with it. So it sounds like, like house bunny. Remember? Megan. You remember that? No, what is that? When um Anna Ferris, Anna Ferris, you know, she meets people on House Bunny, that that movie. Oh, the plane. And she one? like demonically says their name like <laughs> Travis. Travis. <laughs> <laughs> so you 
you should do. Please, next time you meet somebody in a social setting, you have to do that. Adelaide. That doesn't sound demonic, though. Let's try that again. Oh, no. Okay, that works. You like that? My no. pigs. Anytime I listen to death metal, it starts to pig squeal. You tell me to turn it off. Yeah, of course I do. Um, well, I don't forget what we're talking about. Oh, names and right. faces. See, like everybody that I work with, I know every single crew member. I'm I was going to say that when I go to set and, you know, like literally, and you don't see, like, you know, you, I, I'm, you go to set sometimes and people just like work with people, right? Yeah. They don't know. But like, you're, you're someone who actually inspired me to be better about that. And Thank like, you. you know, because it, it honestly, it goes a long way and it, it's like, I have to should. say though, we have the most excellent crew on Riverdale. Like I have never felt such a family environment, not just with the cast. Cast is obviously phenomenal, yeah. but I'm talking camera operators, like focus pullers, every single, the lights, key grips, like everybody like is such a good unit and they work so fucking hard for our show. Like I, I'm freezing in the cold and they're running around and like putting lights up and like, and doing all this stuff so quickly with a 10 minutes before we have to tur like turn lights off and like pull the plug. And I'm, I'm always blown away by these people. So of course I have to know their names. They're the ones who keep the show running. Yeah, no, for, and I mean, look. They're more important than I am, to be honest. Well, it's like, and when, well, when you guys yell cut, right? The cast, they go to like, if you we go to shoot outside, you go sit down, there's a heater. In a heater, and it's, yeah. yeah. They're setting up the next mm -hmm. shot. They're holding up, you know, they're And then while we're the shooting, lights. they're holding a boom or they're doing whatever. They don't get to go sit with a heater. They're freezing their little bums off the mm -hmm. whole time. Yeah. And they don't, and you never hear a crew complain. I've never once heard a crew member complain about anything. So when you shoot a water scene in Canada, it's freezing. I am like the, by the way, I do, anytime there's a water scene, I it's Madeline. I do all my own stunts. No, it's Madeline doing all the water scenes on Riverdale. So wait, you can actually say that you do all of your own stunts because you shoot your own bow. Mm -hmm. Like I you had to go bow. to archery mm -hmm. class to learn. I had to, wanted to. Wanted, well, I yeah. mean, you insisted actually. Yeah. You need to, uh, Joe Rogan, I should, you, you gotta go hang out with Joe Rogan because he shoots bows. Really? Oh, yeah. that'd be fun. No, he'd respect like it. like a YouTube video, that'd be tight if we did he, that together. Yeah, that would be dope. All right, Joe. If you listen to this podcast, <laughs> if you listen, Joe, if you listen to this podcast, <laughs> let me know because you will make, they asked me in an interview the other day too, like who's, uh, who's your celebrity crush, crush? And I was like, you. And they're like, okay. And I was like, you know, I have to say you. And then they're like, got, uh, no, no. What do you mean? That's just like. I have to say you. I yeah, want you're my to girlfriend. You. What I do you mean? To. I want okay. okay. First of all, I better say you because if I didn't, you should be pissed. And then they're like, okay, male celebrity crush. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Duh. Yeah. That we knew that we've been knew that. So if I can make that happen, that'll be really. Maybe that's my in. Is like me shooting. No bows archery because he loves archery. Tight. I'm down. How was uh? How was learning how to shoot a bow and arrow? Great. Um. How I've, do you do it with your nails? It's hard. It's easy. You. I wear gloves. Oh. So like the thing is, is sometimes there are scenes like in episode five, I had to shoot a bow and arrow right at Jughead's head, like right above him. And obviously, I can't shoot an arrow. There's one rule. You can't shoot an arrow if there's someone sitting right, standing right there. Obviously, anyone in that direct line of arrow shooting, you're not, you're not allowed to. Do you so think then, you could actually hit an apple if I put it on my head? Yeah, I can hit a bullseye, hundred um, percent. It's really. Oh, you scared now? Oh, oh shit. I should have one under the bed. <laughs> okay, scare you up a little bit. Uh, so when we shoot like a scene, like when I was shooting the beer can, I believe, or the coke can or something, on top of Jughead's head, they attach the arrow to the bow. So then, and, but there's a scene like that. I don't have my gloves on because I'm not supposed to be doing archery. I grab it because somebody else is playing with it. So then when you don't have a glove on and there's an arrow attached to your bow, your string has to hit something. And so it hits my hand every single time, which is why I have a bruise here half the time that I shoot, uh. which you always notice. And so when you pull it back, it has to hit something. So that's the one thing that's interesting is it's like, if you have the gloves on, you're fine. You're A, you're like totally chilling. But if you don't, you're kind of screwed. Wow. Yeah, but they all, like, if they can, they let me shoot my own bullseyes and, like, they're very, they, like, they know how much I love doing it and, like, the look on my face when I do it, like, they love it so much that they let me do it. How, I was gonna say, how long did it take you to actually, like, shoot it? Oh, the first lesson I shot it. Wow. But my, I had an did excellent Did you ever think teacher. that you'd be doing that? No, but you know, it's so funny. I tell this story a lot. Roberto, during the pilot, asked me, our showrunner, asked me, what are some things that you've always wanted to do but didn't? Or not even just in the realm of acting, but just in life. And one of the things I said was archery. And I'm not sure if he remembered it or if it just hap was happenstance that why I started doing want, it. Why did you want to do archery? I don't know. I just remember like, I'm before I booked Riverdale, I remember watching Hunger Games and being like, that's a cool, like, I was like, that's a cool thing. I wonder if she did that before or if she learned it for that. Or like if she knew how to do yeah, something. And yeah. And I was like, I want a cool fun skill that like I can bring to the table in an audition that's unique. And that was something that always interested me. And it feels like a very interesting weapon of choice. I'm not sure, whatever. So I told him that. Well, let's, hey, if, if it's the end of the world, you don't have to worry about ammo. If you yeah, can but you got to worry about arrows. Well, I mean, you can, if you can sharpen your own arrows, you're good to go. That's a skill I need to learn still. Now, yeah, then you the full, the circle will be complete. Full circle, right. Yeah, you'd be like the walking dead. 
all the time. I love that that pause where we both were just like, well, I don't know where you're going with that. Yeah. yeah. I want to like pause it and be like, hello, darkness, my, my old friend. friend, 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 friend. <laughs> you're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else is like, what's the craziest thing that you've Well, okay. I want to talk about this too. What's it like dating your best friend on the show? Vanessa. Honestly, a dream come true. I, the idea of like making out with a random stranger does not really appeal to me, believe it or not. And the idea of like making out with my best friend is like, whatever, great. Like I know that person. I know where her mouth's been. Like we, we eat the, <laughs> do you know what I mean though? Like we eat the same food. Like we, we well, typically- Cause you're extremely vegan. I'm extremely vegan. She's, she's vegan too, right? She's actually not anymore, but like, I, I don't really care about that. That's not the point. It's like, if, if like her and I are very in sync, like if I'm drinking a hot water with lemon, she'll get a hot water with lemon. Like we just like are you very mean, on the You don't want to like make out with someone who's just drinking like a gallon of milk. And I can also just like pop like a mint in her mouth. Like I feel comfortable enough to be like, yo, your breath stinks or whatever it is. I've never said that to her before. Her breath never stinks. I'm just putting that out there. But I'm saying like, it's it's easy. Like if she's wearing lipstick in the scene and I don't want lipstick all over me, I can be like, can you take your lipstick off? And you know, it's just like a good relationship. Like it's like, it's very open. If there's anything uncomfortable and you know what's great? There's like blocking in some very fun scenes that you guys are really gonna love. On, se um, on season three? In season three that we just that shot. coming up, wow. Episode 12. I've talked about this a lot. I'm sure you guys have figured out what it is by now, but I'm not gonna say it out loud because that would be a spoiler. But there's some scenes where like blocking is very important with your girlfriend. And um, we, we like it's so much more comfortable working it out with somebody that you know and you trust. For everyone listening, blocking is just the art of- Like choreographing a scene, yes. essentially. And uh, doing it with your best friend, you can like, Crack, you can just be very comfortable and open yeah. versus somebody you don't know. And like people, you know what the common misconception with like any kind of relationship -y scenes on shows or movies is that yeah. it's actually sexy. Like I have a lot of friends who date people outside of the industry and they get uncomfortable with kissing on camera or sex scenes or whatever. And it's like, what you forget is there's a hundred people in a room watching you. You're thinking about how do I look? You know, how am I looking on camera? Am I gonna remember my lines after we're done? Like all these other different things. You're not thinking about the other fucking person. Mm -hmm. Like that's the last thing you're thinking about. You're thinking about your character, you know, all of these other things. And there's a hundred people in the room, a boom operator. There's a boom right above your head. Like this, like, do you know what I mean? People forget all that. It's so funny. It's not sexy at all. Well, I mean, it must just make the dynamic easier too with it being like, cause you know, I'm sure like when you and Vanessa hang out and you guys like watch movies, like you're like. Oh, it's, we've always been like that though. Yeah. Dan, what if I do the whole podcast like I this? I prefer you not to. Your shoes are a little dirty and I'd like to keep my jeans clean. Thank you. I love you the most. Damn, you're playing me out on my podcast. You're cute as fuck. I love you. Love you too. Let's talk about our dog, Fig Newton. Oh, I thought you were talking about Dangus. No, not, that's not yet. That's for the next podcast. When you come back on like episode 18 or something. Episode 18? You're playing me out. What? What? You want to come back? 15 episodes. When we get Dangus, I'm back. I don't okay. care who you're- I'm showing <laughs> we're up. Gonna do, we're going to do the, ado the adoption episode. Adoption episode. Well, it's not adoption. It's more like, okay, well, let's talk no, Let's talk about what we're about to do. Let's yeah. talk about what we're about to do. We're going to okay. foster a dog. Yeah, I'm very excited. You guys- I He was supposed to be here today. We didn't have enough time to go pick him up today because I still have bronchitis. Yeah. Um, and I'm also flying to Vancouver in- A couple hours. An hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, we got to go to the airport. Um, so yeah, we're supposed to pick up- uh, uh, Dangus. Dangus, and we're going to foster him. He's a lovely pit bull. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I have a very severe love for pit bulls. We have an affinity for dogs. And pit bulls specifically. And this one got attacked by a dog that he lived with in the home. Mm -hmm. And he's got scars all over his face. And Stitches. Travis's parents have been very great and like taking him in for a little bit because we haven't had, he was far away. So we didn't have time to go pick him up. It's just been very busy for us. So they're taking him and now he's like super happy there. So we're just kind of like biding our time, letting him get comfortable there because he was in a long car ride for a while. And then we have to go pick him up from there, which is like a two hour drive from here and drive yeah. him back here. So, so he's, yeah, he's We're trying he's to give adjusting. him some space to adjust to like a new environment, but I'm very excited to what have What are you him. excited about fostering for? Like, what are you most I excited? I just want to like show him how much love he can get. Like that's what I told Travis is, you know, he was supposed to be at our house last night and Travis had like a fight night with his boys. And I was like, I'm going to be upstairs with- fight. I don't know. Fight, fight club. Like first rule of fight club. No, like to watch- like You, you don't know. talk about it. Okay. Um, to watch UFC. Yep, MMA, UFC. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, UFC. Great, UFC. And so I, he was like, what are you going to do? And I was like, well, if we've got Dangus, um, I'm going to be upstairs like cuddling him all night so he knows how much love and like affection he deserves. And Travis just looked at me and was like, of course you are. But that's what I'm looking forward to is like, this dog doesn't know. Like he's been in a fine home, but he was attacked by another dog. and he just needs to know that like, that's not okay. And that's not going to happen again. And we're going to protect him. Yeah. What okay, happens if you get too attached? Well, then we got a pit bull. <laughs> then we just keep Dangus. We keep Dangus. Now let's talk about Fig. How, uh, you know, why don't you talk about when you first knew you loved Fig? Well, Fig because he, he's to like love. a main on your Instagram stories. I feel he like he's a main, a he main didn't character. He make it into my heart quickly. Like he didn't make it easy to love. Like I remember when we first started dating, 
Um, wow, savage, Madeline, savage, whatever, I don't care. Um, yeah, he was like told he couldn't sleep on the bed. So this poor little nugget like was banished from being loved. That's not true. And look, whatever. Like I get that, that some heart. Anyways, I like I get that some people don't want to sleep on the bed. Like their dogs sleep on the bed, and that's fine. That's your prerogative. Like I'm not gonna judge oh, you. I'll but let him sleep under the covers. This little nugget like deserves to be like in but like intertwined in between my legs under the covers. He's very much a pillow dog. Out. But he wasn't used to that when we first met. So it was hard to love him because he would just kind of hide all the time. And then he'd bark. He'd either bark or hide. LA, you know, I mean, he he is a Dodger dog, okay? Dodger. He, he, I mean, he was running the streets of Pico. We talked about it last night. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he went through some shit. Like, only he knows. Oh, yeah, we were talking about that last night. No, but now he's like a little nugget. Like, he's like a little piece of Play-Doh. <laughs> like you could just really do whatever you, once he trusts you, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I love dog. those dogs that you could just- like, I can just pick him up and put him in my arms and he'll just lay on his back and just look at me. And he's got this dumb look on his face like- and that was the, that was the test when I went to the pound to go rescue him. Is like I want like you know I just got to pick up a dog and if, if if he lets me flip him on his back or like put put his little head on there. I think every dog deserves love, and that's not their fault that they were bred. But at the same time, like those dogs are going to find homes. Like let's take care of the dogs that are like in a shelter and probably going to get put down in ten days. Like mm -hmm. that's what we should be doing. And then remember. When I was going to say, during the happening. fires, during the fires, you and I- uh, you We know, drove to like six different shelters in LA to try and find some dogs to foster. we wanted to foster some dogs that were displaced or that their homes had burned down because, you know, we have we have like a, the perfect place for dogs. Oh, like yeah. our, our house is like a haven for dogs. And also, we, I have a, a very giant, like severely sized hole that just needs dogs to fill it all the time because I miss mine. Yeah, you have a hole <laughs> in your heart because your, your dog lives with your my parents. My parents stole my yeah. dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what was so cool is that literally every rescue center, every animal shelter that we went to, were like totally fine on supplies and and like they were all good. I was good. very impressed I was with how surprised. the community came together. I was, I was very impressed by that. It was like it we, we spent two days literally driving like hours away trying to help. And, and they were like, we're good. Yeah, they turned us, they're like, no, we got like, it. Okay, wow, I'm very impressed. I good felt, for you, yeah. I, It was like a bittersweet thing. So it was like, okay, like yeah, I wanted like, to do something, but it's good that it's good to see people come together. For sure. But I think it also kind of sparked this energy in you because you were always worried about fostering because you don't want to become too attached. But I think it sparked an energy in you when you went there that you were like, I think I can foster. For because sure. fostering is really important too. We like saw a turtle a, there. It's a step that you wouldn't usually think is that important because they can just stay at the pound or wherever they are, but they actually can't. There's not enough space. So fostering is really just giving a dog or a cat or whatever a home to like be loved for a little bit until it finds its forever home. Forever home. But then what if he like -E. likes me so much that yeah. I just want to keep him forever? Then you can foster more dogs and keep that one too. Yeah. Okay. What's the most amount of dogs that you're going to have? 15. Wait, what? <laughs> For real? I don't know. I want to have a big house with like a giant yard and just constantly be like, you know, taking care of animals, like nursing them back to health or whatever. That's like my dream. Yeah. My parents want the same thing. Like my dad is like definitely one, will one day have like an animal rescue like in a his nursery, backyard. Yeah. And he's like nursing little birds back to health with their That's wings. So and you know, my dad would be like building little casts for them in his workshop. Let's talk about Thanksgiving because uh, oh, we did something cool. Our dads met for the first time. Yeah, and our, and our moms, by the way, like my mom hasn't even met your mom yet. Well, it was crazy because your mom went to a different country. My mom went to a different country. And, and so we were both were like, alone. what are we going to do for Thanksgiving? And so we called our dads like, hey, do you guys want to hang like, out? Like go with on them? a vacation or something? I don't know. <laughs> um, and it, let's just, to give some backstory, my dad is like, you know, Used to be a jock, right? Like, yeah, your like dad was lift a baseball weights. player. He was a pro baseball yeah. player. Uh, Let's see what you have to. How do you describe my dad? Your dad? Yeah. Oh, uh, your dad is. He's an entrepreneur. Sure. Right, just like my, my dad. Parents That's are, what they yeah. have. Yeah, your parents are entrepreneurs, just like my dad. Mm -hmm. um, I think your dad is very health conscious. Very. Yeah, like, and that's that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Like, he's very knowledgeable about like food and stuff like that. My dad is very like old school in the sense of like he was raised on like you know, meat, potatoes, mm -hmm. steak, like bulk up, like you know, eggs and all that shit. Uh, your dad is very like, I don't want to say spiritual, but like hippy dippy, like hippy dippy. That's how I describe. Yeah, it. I don't. I didn't want to say that. Like I you say know, that. It's not yeah. an insult. Dad's very like hippy dippy. My dad's very like. Old school. <laughs> and you just say, oh, everything is, my dad's old, old school, school, your dad's this. Yeah. My dad's old school, your dad's Like that. your dad, like, you know, we. <laughs> We're not talking about that. Yeah, but my dad, like never in his whole life. Yeah, my dad's very just like. Hip, my dad's gardens. A hip. Your dad my dad's gardens. A hip, my dad's a hippie. Your dad's That's, a hippie. Like end of story, my dad's a hippie. And your dad's He's from not. South Africa. My right. dad's from Canada. Right. But there are similarities and, you they know. They got along strangely well. Yeah, they like, have two. They're you know, BFFs yeah, now. They got some cool kids. They both also had small dogs, which is like really funny. Yeah, so we had our dads. <laughs> so we brought Fig and then we had our dads bring their dogs. And like my, by the way, my parents stole my dog. Like people sometimes tweet at me and they're like, 
Madeline like replaced Pierre with Fig. And it's like, you know, here's the real drama, guys. I asked my parents to take care of Pierre during the pilot of Riverdale. And then my mom kept being like, oh, just one more month. Like he just makes us so happy and whole. And then I finally went back for Christmas and my intention was to bring him back with me for to start shooting season one. Or I think we were in the middle of season one actually. And my mom and my dad loved him so much. And I could tell that it was kind of like filling the little void of like not having their daughter there. Mm-hmm. My mom asked me if she could just hold on to him for a little bit longer. And that's when I like was like, you guys deserve to keep this beautiful little dog. As much as I love him, you guys should have him. So my dad brought that dog with him and that dog is attached to me. And it's so, oh. I so you kind of like had your your dog too. My little baby. Like ch- yeah. I love him. And that dog does not walk on his own. No, that dog's vestigials do him. not work. Yeah, his if batteries I, if are If I'm not- there, he just looks up. He's yeah. like, hello mom, pick me up now. Um. So how did you think our dad's first date went? It was very cute. Like we would, we went, took with them to Santa Monica, which is like a little beach town in LA. And they were walking. Little? I don't know. It's like, it feels little. Like it feels like a walking, it's walkable. Yeah. So that's definitely. what I mean by little. But we were walking, ahead, like we were all walking in a group and then we'd look back and our dads were like behind us having their own conversation, like strolling. And I remember um, we ran into a comedian at GQ, uh, Ali Wan. And Ali Wong, she saw yeah. our dads and us at- well, We went to dinner at, uh, to, to a restaurant. Yeah. To a very, we our won't favorite say where, restaurant. Our yeah. favorite restaurant. Ever. And she saw us at GQ later and she's like, oh, like who were those older men you were with? Were they dating? <laughs> they thought our dads were together. <laughs> and they I was thought like, they were a really cute they, older gay couple. They got along couple. that well that people really thought that they were together. We were on a double date. I haven't told my dad this. I hope he listens to this, dad. <laughs> Timothy, Timothy and Joe. I'm going to make them like, so like best friend necklaces. It's pretty cute. They were really T cute and J, T that, and J that, forever. that break apart. Forever. Forever. Yeah, I love that. That's cute. Yeah, they're that little, was fun. They're little Thanksgiving homies. Yeah, they are. And we can put the date on it to come. And then my dad's like trying to help like coach your dad to be vegetarian and oh vegan. Well, my dad's so like impressionable. He's easily, yeah, easily he's, impression. Yeah, and my dad loves to impression. So it if, like did not work out. Yeah, no, my dad's like, yeah, I'm going to be vegetarian. I'm like, cool. And then when my dad's about to go home, I'm like, cool, dad, what are you going to make for dinner? And he's like, oh, I'm just going to go to the store, get some steaks. I'm like, oh, I thought you were vegetarian. And he's like, oh, fuck. Oh, Travis, I forgot. But Travis, what, what the am fuck I gonna do eat? I eat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bud, what am I going to eat? Your dad is very appreciative though. I've never met a man who is so loving and appreciative in my life. Like he's so kind. Cool. So kind. He's pretty cool. And he loves you, which is I know. Your family just like welcomed me into their lives with open arms. So did yours. I'm glad you feel like that. I think it all worked out. I I feel like that, yeah. We're on on a pretty good track. Yeah. What's your favorite YouTube video that you've done with me? Quizzing you about Riverdale. Really? Yeah. Okay. Mine's a makeup one. But why why did you- The one where you did my makeup? Yeah. I think we should do a part two where I do your makeup. Uh, Wait, but- No, no, no. I did a tutor- I did a voiceover. Oh, that one. We should do that again. Wait, 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 wait. We've done two, right? We did one where you did my makeup, and then you've also done one where you've done my voiceover for a makeup video. We should redo that again. That was really funny. What, the voiceover one? Yeah, that's funny. We should do a part two. Yeah, that was probably my favorite one that we My done. favorite was probably quizzing you about Riverdale only because I was surprised by how little you'd watched it and how much knowledge you had. Oh, meaning that I had more knowledge than you thought. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I was very surprised by that. Well, but also I'm smart. people really like it. What do you think my head, this big brain up here? Well, your head, your head isn't that, like your head I, isn't big. Do you know these headphones? These are extra, extra, you have small headphones. I have Travis, extra, my extra head large. Is bigger than your head. Baby, Actually, you just can't see it because the your dimension. Hair. Yeah, yeah, it's the hair hides it. But yeah. this is huge brain up here. Mm-hmm. Crazy brain. Your forehead's like half the size of mine, by the I got way. a five head. I've got a seven head. <laughs> 10 head, I've got a 10 head. You see, I've got 11 head, I got 15 head. You wanna keep going? If you could collab with anyone on YouTube, who would it be? Oh, uh, who would it be? I don't know. I've already done that. Yeah, we collab. We're collabing right now. We're collabing right now. You know what's up? Maybe like Shane Dawson again. I don't know. You know what's cool? And a lot of people don't know this, but like when you collabed with Shane, like right as your channel started. Yeah, because he wanted me to be in a conspiracy theory video. And he kindly, before I even had a million followers or subscribers, they call them. Subscribers. Wow. Uh, he was very kind and he was like, I saw that you have a YouTube channel. If you want to do a club for yours as well, I'm super well, him, open to doing it. They were huge Riverdale fans too, right? It was just really cool. Him, Ryland, and he's, Ryland is so lovely. Shane is so lovely. I was really impressed with like, I didn't expect him to want to do a club on my channel. I was like, oh my God, like you don't have to do that if you want to just do one on yours. And he's like, no, 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 let's do something for yours. And it was very sweet, but who would I, who was I talking about that should have been in YouTube Rewind? That I was like, those people should have Shane. been in. Shane, PewDiePie. PewDiePie. But there was one other person I was talking about uh, that I feel like I was talking about. Uh, hold on. I know we just watched it yesterday. I know. David. David Dobrik wasn't in there. No, and David should have been in there. I would collab with David. Uh, Liza. I would collab. I would love to collab with Liza Koshy. Yeah, and we- uh, I met her for the first time at Emo Night. Yeah. But I felt like I already knew her. No, because she's, yeah, she's She's one of those people. She's just so kind. And you know, having David on the podcast was super cool for me. Yeah, he was on it before me. (laughs) 
<laughs> Are you bitter? Not at all. Jealous? But, like I wasn't even the first one. Are you jealous? <laughs> well, look, it was like the first one happened by mistake. I mean, not mistake. I but totally by support Gary being your first. Like I think that. <laughs> you think what? <laughs> Gary was your first. Gary love. was my first. Um, well, you've just like before you ever connected with him, he was somebody that you like loved reading his books and you looked up to him a lot. It's kind of like your other Joe Rogan, I feel like. And so him being your first guest was, I think, an incredible first guest. Like, yeah. and he's also a much better interview than I am. Let's be real. No, not at all. I, I can't put disagree. my feet up. I can't put my feet up on. I think Gary that would v. not go as well. No, um, it with Gary v. I mean, you still went like. You poo pooed it. You were like, poo pooed it. Well, if you had like brand new shoes on, maybe, but like, you know what really irks me? When you put your white shoes all over each other in the podcast. (laughs) When I'm like this. Yeah, you're not, see, by the way, you're not doing it when I'm I'm here. Do you notice that? Guys, you notice that? No, it's because they're not white. That's why. No, it's because I'm here and you're comfortable with me. You know what I like? What? That you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever I want. It's your podcast. It's my podcast. You make the rules, baby. (laughs) Would you ever start a podcast? No. We've talked about I don't having have our own. Where we're going to call date night with traveling. We're going to call it date night with traveling. But then at the same time, it's like, and it's cute. And I like that idea because I love Jenna and marbles and Julian. Oh, I'd love to collab with Jenna. But anyways, um, I love, I'm <laughs> anyways, um, they're, they have such a great podcast. Like they've got such a great relationship and they don't overshare their relationship at the same time. Like their podcast is about other things and news. My fear would be that I overshare if we had a podcast together. And also like, I already have so much of my life. What would you overshare? Not overshare like details, but more overshare like our vibe. I feel like we already have enough of us on the internet. And I feel like there are parts of our relationship that I like are private. And I feel like I, the reason why I wouldn't want a podcast is people- Like when I play guitar naked? Don't talk about that. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, but yeah. you know what I, but do you know what I mean? It's like, there's so few things in this world that I keep, not private. There's a lot of things I keep private, but I have a YouTube channel. I'm very open and honest on all my platforms with my fans and there it's a great relationship, but having a podcast feels like I don't have, you know what? I'm insecure that I don't have enough to say. That's really, really? what it is. To be honest, it's that I don't feel like I would have an interest. An hour of me talking is not good for anybody. I think it's cool because- I have- insert my foot in my mouth like three times a, a day. I, I can agree to that. Yeah. So like, why the hell would I put myself in that position for a podcast where you can't even cut it? <laughs> There's three times in this, I've been like, oh, should I? Shouldn't this like that? <laughs> like, what? Go back and listen to find out where those spots are. I'll put uh, like little, cards on there. Like little moments where I was like, shouldn't I share that? You know? <laughs> No, I think it's cool. You know, one thing that this podcast has really given me is- A um, platform? No. no. (laughs) (laughs) To speak. Are you my publicist now? (laughs) This platform is just really enriching the lives of- No, uh, it's the messages. And it's like, you know, I think- Here's one thing. Yeah, talk about those messages you get on Instagram. Look, I'm I interview 20, you? I'm 29. Um, I've been making music, my, I mean, my whole life, but really like, you know, a, a song got popular when I was 20. Okay? Fuck them with my Vans on. No, no, no. Before oh, that. Whoops. Uh, but, you know, almost, it was eight years ago and um, I had severe anxiety and I didn't talk about it. I had crazy panic attacks. You know this because you're my right hand when all I'm this shit goes down. I'm also your therapist, You're my therapist when yeah. this shit goes down. And I mean, I, it was debilitating for me. Like I, I didn't drive yeah. for a year, yeah. you know, shout out Panda. He drove my car. Like when I was getting my record deal, I'd run out of meetings and I'd, you know, yeah. I'd be in studios Very and real. call 911 because I thought yeah. I was having a heart attack. First but big I, studio session you did yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't talk about that shit then because it was like very but taboo. where would you have? Exactly. Like what, on your Instagram? Like it it just didn't feel like there was like a natural integration for that. Exactly. And I feel like I was like, almost like no one understood, like no one really knew what anxiety was, like was like really like listening to it. Like I feel like, you know, 10 years ago, or like it was just, it wasn't as talked about as it is now. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, you know, for me, getting those messages about like, hey, like, you know, you having a show called ADHD and having people on who are like, you know, off kind of off the wall and like, like Gary, you know, like talk really fast and like Mm -hmm. how, but like, show people how to harness that energy, yeah. whether it be like anxiety or creative energy and how to make something positive. Um, and that's what I love about this, you know? And having people like you on too, because I mean, you suffer from that as well. Anxiety, yeah. yeah. Massive panic attacks, crazy anxiety. Um, yeah, I do. I don't want to talk about it often. No, you don't. And I Actually feel like- at all. <laughs> like never. People probably don't even know that. But that's something crazy because I feel like, you know, when when we started dating and, and I'd be like super anxious or had, like that was something like we could be there for each other for. Right. And I didn't actually really acknowledge that it was anxiety I was suffering from until probably around when we were dating and you kind of helped me figure that out because I would have panic attacks, but I wouldn't realize they were panic attacks. Mm-hmm. Like I would not be able to breathe. I would feel like something was sitting on my chest. I would be like freaking the fuck out and I wouldn't I'd be able to like register what it was. And my mom was very worried about me. And then when you and I talked about it, you're like, oh, that's a panic attack. Like you are suffering from anxiety. 
I finally felt like I understood it. And then I was able to maybe overcome it a little bit more. I still deal with it day to day. And I don't think that like, I'm not going to, I don't technically feel like I need to be medicated for it. Like it's something that I just kind of work through every day. And I have anxiety about stupid stuff. Like I think most of the time it's stupid. Um, but I, I think one thing that, that really helped, uh, is that app that we got that mm-hmm. that meditate that breathing app? Yeah, I use an app called Calm Use Headspace. Yeah, and it's it's just good like when I'm freaking out or something because I'll get them at the weirdest but, times. Well, for me, it's more like you know everything can be anything big can go wrong and I'm fine, but one tiny small thing goes wrong and I'm like yeah. off the rocker. Yeah, I'm, I, and I'm crazy and I'm like crying. Like I cr- I cry like probably three times a week about small things, you know, and it's crazy because my life is amazing. Were you like that in high school? You know, I I was thinking about this this morning. And I used to cry and I didn't realize it was a manipulation thing, but I think I was doing it. I was really good about getting my grades up. So when grades? I, yeah, I would cry. I, I would like find a way to talk to a teacher to get my grade higher. That's why I had a 4.3 GPA. That's why you're so good at negotiating. Yeah. So I would have like, so I remember <laughs> in anatomy and physiology, I had an A minus and I went up to my teacher and her husband also worked at my school and I went to an arts high school. And then I went to like the sister school that was also a science and math institute. And my friends would always be like, oh, like how do you have such a high GPA? And yeah, I would get like A's, A minuses. But when I had an A minus, I would go talk to the teacher and see what I could do to get it up. But whenever I talk to somebody of authority, I typically start crying. So then I would get teary eyed while I'm doing it and they would see how I was so into it. And they'd be like, oh, if you just do this one extra credit thing, I think I can get you to an A or, you know, we can work together like after school or whatever it was. And I didn't realize at the time that I was really just like, you know how Cher in Clueless kind of negotiates to get better grades? Yeah. I kind of did that, but I didn't realize I was doing it at the time. And now how I look back- How many speeding tickets have you gotten out of? Uh, I, know, I don't speed, as you know, I'm kind of a grandma when I drive, but I used to do a lot of California stops. What's that? Oh, that's you just roll Where you stop roll kind of through. Like you go slow, Smart. but you don't stop. Um, I, I used to do a lot of those. And every time that I get pulled over, authority, cry, and then get out. So I've only gotten one ticket ever. And that was because I was with my mom in the car. And I was like, I can't pull the cry card with my mom in the car. Because your mom lame. would just look at you and be like, total bullshit. Nah, my mom would more just like, she would start like, oh, shame, darling. Okay. And then, you know, she, she would feel bad. And I don't want to put my mom through that. You know? You're so kind. <laughs> It's not intentional though. I just cry about authority. Like it's weird. When I'm like faced with authority, I cry. It's very strange. I don't get it. So on the show, you just pretend. No, it's real. It's real. It's real. Like, you know, I cry a lot in my personal life. I feel like you're very in in tune with your emotions. Yeah. I don't hide. I can't hide emotions. Like I'm very just like, if if you see it, it's there. I love that about you. Do you? Because I feel sometimes it drives you insane. No, but I like knowing that like, you know, if something's wrong, I'll be able to tell. Yeah. I can't hide it. Even if I say nothing for three hours, like, you know, there's something wrong. That's just, oh my God. Because I'm not ready to talk about it. (laughs) I need it. Like, I need to process. Like you want space. I don't want space. I need to be right next to you, but I don't want to talk about it yet. Now we're just all about our love languages on ADHD. Yeah. Do you guys know about love languages? These are really important. If you're in a relationship, you should figure out what your partner's giving and receiving love languages are. You should look it up. It's really helpful. I feel like we're pretty good. Yeah. Well, Travis loves gift giving and I love to receive gifts. So it works out perfectly. No, I'm just kidding. I'm time and um, words of affection Mm. is like what I give and what I receive. Yeah. You have difficulty with, I mean, you've gotten better with it, but I'm sorry, words of affirmation. You've gotten better with words of affirmation now that you know that I need that, but you're a gift in time person. Yeah. So you love to give and receive gifts and like, you love to give time. I like to time. surprise you. You do. And you do. I like to taunt you. Okay. Yeah. Last thing I wanted to talk about. This is how I wanted to end up the podcast because okay. we're going into the holidays. We are. And one of the things, my favorite things about our relationship is birthday, anniversary, or Christmas. And, we, and I think it's really smart that you and I have nailed down like what we go big for and what we don't. So like anniversaries, we both like got- no, we no, we get each. But here's we the get thing. the same level of present. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we discuss it. Like we're open about level, but we don't talk about what it is. And what I want to know is like, what? What? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. What am so I like getting last, for Christmas? No, no, no. Last year, I taunted you for so long about Christmas. About Christmas. Because, it, but you were like cocky about it. Like you showed my mom and my dad and all my best friends knew, and so I knew there was a secret. I just didn't know what it was. You didn't know that I was talking to all your best friends though. Uh, I knew you were talking to Vanessa. Yeah. She told me she was like, oh yeah. She said to me. She said to me. I know what your Christmas present is. <laughs> I was like, oh, you little. And then she's like, and I was like, well, I don't know what yours is. So. <laughs> she knows what's your, what yours is this year too. No, she does not. Yes, she does. I'm seeing her tomorrow. Okay, great. No. Nope. <laughs> <text her> right <laughs> I'll get you. Um, how, okay. What's like the most annoying thing I do about, about your presence? You know, I like what you do on my presence, but if you're asking me what the most annoying thing you do in general is, I'm happy to tell you. Yeah. Okay. What's the most annoying thing I do in general? Playing loud music in public. I just told you this. Yeah. 
It does drive me insane. I do that a lot. Because you don't realize it, but like you'll be scrolling through Twitter and then you'll click on a video and then it's like loud and we're like in public. And I I just, I don't know why that's one of my pet peeves. And yeah, that's it. But like a gift wise, I think we both do like the taunting thing. Cause I went and like, I went and bought one of his presents the other day. And then I was telling him the whole day that I'm like, I'm going to go get one of your presents. And then I wrapped it before he came home and now it's sitting under a tree wrapped. And he was like trying to pick it up and you know, feel like yesterday. You'll never be able to Do you have a lot of anxiety about your gifts this year? I don't get anxiety about gifts. Like the only thing that stresses me out about gift giving is that you are an incredible gift giver. And so I get nervous that mine isn't good enough. But this year I know mine is so good. Like it's so good <laughs> that I'm going to blow you out of the water. So that's what I think is fun about us too is like it's a competition. Oh, like now it is. Not, it's not it's about- full-fledged. It's not about like, oh, I hope he gets me something amazing. It's like, I'm going to get something I'm gonna so much her. better than him. And it's fun. And then like, I'm enjoying trying to figure out what to get you and I'm racking my brain. But your Christmas is in December and your birthday is in April. So I've got to like also plan like your birthday and like save some stuff for your birthday. Yeah. I just go all out. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome to the demise of our relationship on ADHD. Don't make that joke. <laughs> I don't just like kidding. that. I'm just kidding. Um, well, yeah. Thank you so much yeah, for coming. I, I mean, catch you, a fight. you had no other choice because <laughs> I, I you. drove you, <laughs> and you're taking me to the airport. And I'm taking you to the airport. Um, is there anything that that you want? Like, like what you got videos? Co- Wait, is our video coming out? Soon? Is this coming out for next Friday? Friday. This Friday. So yeah, our video Friday. will just have come out. Hopefully, I edited it in time. Ooh. I haven't started yet. So yeah. So what video? Okay. What video is that? Okay. Well. Two days ago, my Queen Mary chill video just came out uh, with Travis. We went to Queen Mary. We went and experienced It's a haunted ship in Long Beach. But it was all about Christmas and it was really cute and fun. Not all about Christmas. I'd kind of turned it into haunting. We'll see if I edited that out or not. No, you can't edit it out. There's too much backstory and history there. It's fun. It's a murder mystery. Who knows if I've even edited it by now. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Love you all. Um, Anyways, thank you so much for coming, baby. I love you. Uh, Love you too. Should we do the first kiss on ADHD? Here, we can just do this. Mm. Hot. You're t- <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. If you liked it, subscribe. Uh, if you didn't, I'm, I don't know what to tell you. Don't listen bad. to it next time. All right. Give me a kiss. Okay. Bye. Bye.